Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. In this video, I'm uh, rebuilding or building a 5.7 liter V8 Merc Cruiser. And um, on every Merc Cruiser I build, I replace the Thunderbolt ignition system with a Delco EST ignition. Um, so um, the purpose of this video is to show you what I think is the best way to wire up the Delco EST system, the Thunderbolt 5 system, not Thunderbolt 4, but the Thunderbolt, the Thunderbolt 5 system <clears throat> on either a uh, 5.0, 5.7, 7.4, or a uh, 4.3. So let me go ahead and explain what I've done. So with a Thunderbolt 5, you have the module used to be over here on this, um, yeah, I believe it's on this side. The module used to be right here on the exhaust panel, on the exhaust uh, riser. And there was two connectors, this one, this connector here, and this connector here, this connector right here. So the first thing I do is I cut this wire, cut this off. There's a purple wire and a tan with blue stripe. I cut the, cut it off right there, all right? So that leave, left me with a tan wire with a blue stripe and a purple wire. So I took the tan with blue. So on this other connector, you have a yellow here and a white with black stripe right here, I believe it was. Yeah, white with black stripe right there. You got a yellow and a white with black stripe. I cut those two there, there, in there and so that left me with a yellow and a white stripe i then connect the tan with blue stripe to the yellow i connect this white with black stripe to the purple wire that i cut off the other connector this purple wire is plus 12 volts from the ignition switch it feeds into here it feeds the white with black stripe which kind of, that ends up over here at your shift keel connector right here this is a safer way to do it because now I've got plus 12 volts here and it's, it's uh, shrouded by this uh, insulator here. I don't have a loose terminal. If I had 12 volts on this terminal, this will be hot if it's ever disconnected and that's not good. So right now, this, this pole is hot when it's powered, but it's shrouded. So it's not gonna, if it touches anything, it won't hurt anything. That's to me a safer way to do it, all right? So this new way does not need, you don't need to tie into the fuel pump positive. This, I used to tie into this purple wire here. I don't need to do that anymore. I now have my pur this purple wire, which was, this purple wire was feeding the module with power. It no, the module no longer needs to be powered there. So this purple wire is now free. I used it tied to the white with black stripe. Comes out here. All right, so now I've got my plus 12 volts to here from my shift kill service. All right, now on the shift kill, I provide this harness, I provide this plug with a red loop of wire. And what I've done, I've looped it around Put it inside the loom, going through here. I fished it through the loom all the way through here. Made it, trying to make it clean. I run, wrap this tape, got it through here, and then wrap the tape back around. So now I've got my, this is my shift kill signal coming from the shift kill switch. Your shift kill switch is on the uh, riser on this side, on the uh, starboard side. And so we got 12 volts here. When the shift kill switches, it switches 12 volts to this wire, which gives, gives me 12 volts right here. All right, and that takes care of the shift kill. Shift kill is now done, okay? Now, the, remember I had the tan with the uh, blue stripe tied into the yellow up here on the front. I removed, there was a temperature sensor right here that had a yellow and a black wire with a, uh, a plug-in connector. I cut the connector off. I cut the black wire back down to right here, just cut it off. It's a ground, it doesn't have to be, it's okay if it loose, loose, uh, loose, hangs loose there. The yellow, I put a ring terminal on it and I put a new temperature switch in this hole and connected the ring terminal right there. Everything's good, all right? So this is a switch. So you wanna make sure you've got a ground connection to the thermostat housing. And so even though I've got um, uh, shrink wrap, not shrink wrap, what do they call it? Uh, Teflon tape on the uh, sensor is still making good enough ground connection there. And so you don't wanna to put too thick because you have to have some kind of connection between the, the body of this brass switch and the, and the cast iron housing or else your alarm won't work. So this is your temperature alarm. So we got the yellow tied in here. It comes back over here. Again, and it's tied in right here. All right, so that's your temperature over alarm switch. That takes care of that. So the last two things we have to do, oh, by the way, so I'm leaving this connector unconnected. This purple, white, used to be the set timing connector, and it comes up right here. I'm just leaving it abandoned in place. I'm not taking it out. It's, it's got a plug on it, but I'm just gonna leave it just like that. Just leave it right there. Okay, sorry about that interruption. I thought I'd figure out something better, but it turns out it's not gonna work. So let me continue on. So this connector here, 
We'll have a purple with a white stripe. It'll be abandoned in place. It'll be a black wire here that's abandoned. This gray wire is the was the wire that was coming from your Thunderbolt 5 module that was triggering your uh, cool to, to fire, but that's no longer needed. So this will be abandoned also. So these three wires will be abandoned in place. There was a, a white with green stripe and a white red stripe. That went to your old Thunderbolt distributor. I cut that off and got rid of it. So at this time, all I have these, this connection here and this here, those are all, uh, I just gonna, I was gonna um, tie them back over here. Run these down through here and just kind of tie them down low. Tie them out of the way. We'll tie right on the wire, tie them down here with this harness here, just keep them down out of the way. It's, they're, they're, they can be abandoned just like they are. All right, now that leaves two more wires. So you've got a purple here and the tan, let's see, the gray, this is gray. So I had a purple and a gray with ring terminals. I had these ring terminals on there. These ring terminals on the purple and gray. I cut that off, cut them off. And then in the kits, I provide this butt splice here. This is a 14 gauge butt splice to splice the purple wire into the pink wire for your new coil connection. The gray wire is your tack signal now, and it goes back to your, uh, it goes to in here to the tack signal. And it goes to this white wire coming off your coil, the new Delco ESD coil. I'm not gonna make that yet. I'm gonna make that last after it's in the boat and running, or after it's I'm not in the boat, but I'm gonna run it on a stand here in my shop before I put it back in the boat. And um, I'm gonna make sure, actually, that won't do any good either, because this the tack's not even connected until it's in the boat. I forgot about that. So I'm not gonna make this connection until it's actually in the boat and I've tested everything, it works, and then uh I'll hook that up last because I don't want the tack to uh, possibly stop it from running. Okay, to wrap up this video on the installation of a uh, Duco EST kit and a Thunderbolt 5 harness. So, my, like I say, my kit comes with four harnesses. It comes with this harness here. <coughs> the, uh, that's the coil power harness. Comes with the uh, comes with the coil to distributor harness, this one right here. Comes with the shift kill harness, which I've already discussed. And then it comes also what's called a set timing harness, or this is what you use to set the timing. It's not used when the engine is running on the, on the water. It's only used when you set timing. I've got another video that shows how to use that, so I won't go into that here. Just letting you know that I have four harnesses that come with the kit. All right, so this thing's wired up. It's all ready to go. Um, I'm gonna do a separate video for the Thunderbolt 4 kits. It's similar, but I don't wanna uh, make this video any longer than it has to be uh, for, for those customers that don't have a Thunderbolt 4. So I'll do a separate video for the Thunderbolt 4 system uh, uh, next time I build an a, um, engine for with the Thunderbolt 4. All right, um, thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to my channel if you find my videos helpful.